Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to do a follow-up video on um, the C-BET exam, all right? So I haven't done anything, I haven't talked to anybody about it. It's just been kind of one of those private matters because a lot of people are taking the test. I've heard of several people already not passing the test. And, you know, just being honest, I, I kind of feel like even saying like, hey, yay, I passed it. I, I kind of feel like that's bragging and it's, it's not right. So, um, except I've had many requests to make this video. So that's why I'm doing this. In other words, it wouldn't happen. All right. Um, so I, I guess the first thing we should talk about is my day of testing. It was, it was extremely frustrating. I, I didn't follow any of the rules that people are supposed to do. Um, and I got a special request for a service call and it was that morning. My test wasn't until um, May 1st at 1 p.m. So I was like, sure. They, my salespeople told me that the service call was just for a spring arm, you know, on a OR lights. And the spring arm wasn't going all the way down. So basically I was going to go there and check and see if somebody boogered something up. And it's, it's not something that is field repairable so I was basically going to go get the weight capacity of the spring arm and um, you know figure out the configuration in the room take a photo of the room it was gonna be quick and easy right well when I got there it was a motorized boom <laughs> it was not a spring arm it was a motorized boom and there was equipment on the boom and it was stuck in the up position so I had to get out my ladder and that was the, the video that I did where there is a wiring rat's nest up above the ceiling. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. I was clearly um, frustrated at the situation because I like having correct information when I respond to a service call that way there. I can plan accordingly, including have the correct tools and stuff on me. So uh, thankfully, I, I was able to semi-diagnose the situation. However, I left the hospital 45 minutes before I was supposed to be taking the test. Luckily, the test wasn't that far away. It was only like 30 minutes away. So I showed up at the testing center 15 minutes early because I drive a fast car. <laughs> and um, when I got there, the room was locked. There was nobody there. And um, so I called, uh, I had to look up the testing center on Google and then I called the telephone number that was there because there's no number on the door that says hey if nobody's here call this number so I looked up the testing center I called it some guy was kind of short with me uh, and says somebody will be there in just a minute and um, so then this uh, this older Asian lady come by and she unlocked the door and she says go inside there should be some papers and you can get started and that was all that was told to me. So um, I went inside and there were some lockers and I know that we're supposed to take our, our possessions and whatnot and we're supposed to place those items in the lockers. So that's what I did. First thing, I checked to make sure there was nothing in my pockets and I went over, there's some locks hanging there. I put my stuff in there and uh, then an Asian girl came in who was taking a real estate exam and she followed suit, like she put her stuff in there, right? Um, only makes sense. There's no written instructions anywhere inside the room, so that's what we would do, right? Anyway, uh, the guy showed up 15 minutes late. The guy, the proctor, showed up 15 minutes late. He shows up in flip-flops and a jersey. Not the professional conduct, I would assume, from somebody that's proctoring official exams. Um, and then he proceeds to yell at me and this Asian girl for doing something that we were not told to do. And he just wouldn't let it go. Like he just kept going on and on about you guys are, we're given instructions. You have to do what you're told to do, this and that. And I, I finally, guys, if you know anything about me, you should know that I have a problem keeping my mouth shut. Guaranteed. I have a problem with this. So. I lit the guy up. I told him that had he been responsible enough to be there on time, we would have had correct instructions and we would have done as we were told. 
But given the scenario, we did the best we could with what we knew. And I told them, if anything, because he, as, as he was checking in this girl, he just, he was so pissy about it. And he, he just kept going on about how, like, uh, she, you know, how some people talk down at women because they know they can. You know when somebody does it, because he, he only did it a little bit to me. And I kind of straightened him out. But he, this girl, obviously, uh, culturally, you know, she's quiet and kind of submissive. He just would not let it go. He was talking down at her. And this is right before her exam. You don't do that to somebody before their test. And um, I, I finally stood up and I told him, hey, it's a minor detail. The fact that she put her stuff in this locker. I said, it's a minor detail. Just let it go. You're, you're making this into a big situation. And it's not a big situation, all right? Just let it go. I said, finish checking her in so she can go take her test. And then finish solving my problem. And my problem was, is that I didn't have a test code because there's a problem with the Amy email database. They said they're sending me emails. Trust me, I check, I, I do this every day, right? I, I checked all my emails. I was receiving nothing from their email server. And um, so anyway, I had, uh, I contacted uh, Danielle out of Amy. She was fantastic. She contacted her people and they got me a test code. So it was 45 minutes, you know, into my testing. So it was 1.45 and uh, that's when I finally got the test code. I was able to get in and we we're registered to get in and, and take the test. So I was already flustered at my morning and obviously at the proctor and his demeanor. So right after that, I, I went through and I took the test. And at the bottom of every question, there's the ability, got you little bastard. There's the ability to answer um, your opinions on a question. I really like that about this test. So you can give your thoughts on, um, or your comments on each and every question. And you betcha I left some comments on there. Um, so without going into too much detail, I can tell you guys that there was, there was a pretty good quantity of anatomy, physiology type questions. There are practical applications. There was a lot of that. There was a few questions, just a couple, on um, electrical formulas. And I covered all that stuff on those um, study groups that I did. And fortunately, that worked out quite well. So um, there, there was a couple questions that I, I absolutely ripped them a new one about. Because if, you're, if you were testing me about something, you better have your technical terminology correct. And um, one of them... I, without without saying too much, there's one on hydrocolators. And if you guys know me, you know that I've done many videos, probably four or five videos on hydro, hydroculators, hydrocolators. And, um, you know, they asked the question, and in the question, one of the answers was it, it could be a corroded heating coil. Well, I've, I've worked on a whole bunch of these, and they have heating elements but not heating coils. It's a heating coil. If it's in like a hot water heater or something and you have a coil of a heating element. Um, but just in general, calling something a heating coil is bad practice. And I, I said that that is, it's not good. I said, I, I, I'm, this is the one time where I was kind of unmodest. And I said, I, I'm probably one of the, uh, the experts on these type of machines in this country. And I can tell you for a fact that I've never heard of, you know, some of this answer. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's a, a few questions I, I was pretty pissed about. I'll, I'll be straight up honest. I was upset. And, um, I thought the entire test I was going to fail guaranteed. I, I was, I was pretty pissed because some of the, some of the questions were like, gotcha, aha type things. Like what's the least probable outcome? What's the least probable outcome? It should always be what's the most probable outcome, you know, not the least. That's just a play on words. And those are gotcha type of questions. It, it should always be a scenario where there's a def definitive answer. Now, when you say least probable, well, I can argue that something might not be the least probable depending on the scenario. And I mean, it, there's also a couple times where they use like a generic n nomenclature, like monitor, like there's a monitor with this type of problem. 
what monitor? Patient monitor? Cardiac output monitor? A video monitor? What, what when you say like monitor, what, what is this? And, and I ripped them a new one over that one too, because, um, I, and I, I'm not going into a lot of detail on the question because I, I think that would be a compromise. But there, there was one or two questions where they used like generic terminology like monitor. And I honestly believe that they should use either a specific model, um, especially when they're doing scenarios. Like use a specific model. Go ahead. Um, and if we haven't had experience with that model, then maybe you have an out. But, you know, just to say a generic nomenclature like monitor, that doesn't tell me anything. Okay. So... Um, there's, there's several questions like that, that I, I left comments on all of them. I was, I was upset. So, um, and they got probably more feedback from me than what they were expecting. Um, but in the end, you know, at, at the bottom of every question, there's the ability to also market for, um, for review at the very end. And I marked a lot of them for review, but historically, I don't always do so well on those. In other words, if I go back and I review, often I'll change my answers. I'll have a change of heart. And honestly, gosh, just to tell you the fact, as a 21 year biomed, if there's something I've never heard of before, because the CBET is a general proficiency exam, okay? It is not a specialty proficiency exam. Specialty proficiency exam would be on like cath labs or something like that, okay? General proficiency means if I have been a biomed at small and large hospitals from coast to coast for 21 years, and there's a device on that test that I have never heard of before, maybe it shouldn't be on that test. Just saying, guys. That's how I honestly feel about it. And there is one or two that I was like, what? I have never had to figure that out before in my entire career. Why am I doing it now? I am thankful that they didn't have like any resistor color bands questions or anything like like I, I've heard that they have in the past because that would be absolute garbage. And just to let you guys know, um, I, I did pass the test out of uh, 165. I, I missed like 20, 20, 21, something like that. I don't remember the exact number, but I, I did pretty reasonably well. and. Um, I, I thought the whole time I was going to fail. So there you guys have it. It's something uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did. But at the same time, I was frustrated when I did it. I should have uh, managed myself better that morning and not did any service calls. Then I'd be in a more relaxed environment. And uh, I will never be taking an exam with that proctor ever again. Ever. I mean, that kind of professional conduct just set everybody up in that room for failure because everybody is flustered because of that proctor's uh, conduct. So anyway, guys, there you have it. Um, I can't get into any more real questions. I mean, I remember a lot of them, um, but I feel like if I were to go on here and publicly talk about questions and specific answers, it'd be a compromise of the test. And uh, I won't do that. So Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and all you guys that are yet to take the uh, CBED exam, good luck to you. Um, I, I've already heard of many people passing. I've already heard of several people failing, so it's it's still a huge challenge for even somebody that has done this for you know a couple decades. Still a challenge of a test. So, good luck, guys.